Hello students, welcome back to Deeksha Vedantu English for 9th and 10th. I am your chemistry master teacher Ankita. Today we are going to discuss the very first topic under 15 minutes that is types of chemical reaction. So this is from the chapter 1 chemical reactions and equations. So let's get started. So before we discuss the topic, let me remind you to subscribe to the channel Deeksha Vedantu English for 9th and 10th and do turn on that notification button. And we have a telegram channel as well. So Deeksha Vedantu English Telegram channel. So the link will be in the description and the notes will be available in the description. Please click on that so that you know the uh, previous year's uh, paper will be useful for you. So let's get started. First thing first, first type of reaction is combination reaction. The name itself suggests here. So this is a combination reaction. Here two or more than two reactants are going to react with each other to form a single product okay this is nothing but combination reaction let me write it for you so combination reaction a reaction in which in which two or two or more than two reactants more than two reactants reactants Combine to form a single product. Combine to form a single product. This is nothing but combination reaction. The name itself suggests here. Example, calcium oxide is going to react with water to form calcium hydroxide, CaOH twice. Coke is reacting with oxygen. So, this is a combustion reaction. It is going to produce carbon dioxide gas, heat as well as light energy. And nitrogen uh, gas and oxygen gas are reacting with each other to form nitrogen monoxide okay so this uh, these are examples of combination reaction so let's move forward now next one is the opposite to uh, combination uh, combination reaction that is decomposition reaction so in case of decomposition reaction a single reactant breaks down or breaks up or decomposes to give two or more products that is nothing but decomposition reaction here a single a single reactant reactant decomposes single reactant decomposes to give to give two or more than two products more than two products this is nothing but decomposition reaction here so ferrous sulfate heptahydrate 7H2O, FeSO4, 7H2O is going to decompose to give ferrous sulfate and 7 molecules of water. And ferrous sulfate, this ferrous sulfate is going to break down to give Fe2O3 ferric oxide and SO2 sulfur dioxide as well as sulfur trioxide gas. And 2P, 2 PbNO3 twice, that is lead oxide is going to decompose to give PbO4, NO2 and O2. So, this is in brown color. This is a brown colored gas. So, these are some examples for decomposition reaction. But mind you, decomposition reactions need some kind of energy. Okay. So, these are not going to ha happen just randomly, but they need some kind of energy. Depending upon the type of energy, so we have three types of decomposition reactions. Let me show you. So, first one is thermal decomposition reaction and then we have photolytic and electrolytic decomposition, re decomposition reaction. So, if a decomposition reaction happens in presence of heat energy, in presence of heat energy, then we term it as thermo, thermal or thermolytic decomposition reaction. One is the same. Here is an example. Magnesium carbonate upon heating, so decomposes to give magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. Sodium hydroxide is going to give sodium oxide and water. So, when, when heat is given. Next, we have photolytic decomposition reaction. So, this is nothing but light energy, photon, light, light energy. So, it can be natural light or artificial light, okay. So, when decomposition reactions happen in presence of light, when, uh, you know, light is supplied in the form of energy, is called photolytic decomposition reaction. So, ozone molecule is going to decompose in presence of UV light to produce oxygen molecule and nascent oxygen this is nascent oxygen and no2 is going to decompose to give no and o 
This is also an example for photolytic decomposition reaction. And when we talk about electrolytic decomposition reaction, so energy in the form of electricity when given, so when we provide electricity in the uh, as the form of energy, few of the decomposition reactions happen. Example, we have water. So water is not going to undergo thermolytic or photolytic decomposition reaction, but when we pass electricity to, through water, it is going to undergo electrolytic decomposition reaction to give 2 H2, so 2 H2O gives 2 H2 plus O2, okay. So, this is hydrogen peroxide. So, hydrogen peroxide upon uh, passing electricity through it, it gives 2 H2O plus O2. So, this is the reaction for water. 2 H2O is going to give 2 H2 plus O2, okay. So, this is about electrolytic decomposition reaction. Moving forward to the next type of reaction that is displacement reaction. So, displacement reaction is a very unique reaction. So, every reaction is very unique but so when it comes to displacement reaction, the more reactive metal, the more reactive metal is going to metal displaces, displaces the less reactive metal, the less reactive metal from its salt solution, metal from its salt solution. This is nothing but displacement reaction. So, displacement reaction is a very, very, very important reaction because so you see this reaction in first chapter, second chapter as well as in third chapter. That's why. And in order to remember displacement reaction, we should know the reactivity series. So, I will tell you the reactivity series but before that, let's see some examples. Copper is more reactive than um, silver. So, it is going to displace silver from silver nitrate to form Ag and copper nitrate and zinc is more reactive than hydrogen. So, zinc is placed above hydrogen in the reactivity series. So, zinc can displace hydrogen from H2SO4 to produce zinc sulphate and hydrogen gas. Let me show you the reactivity series now. This is nothing but reactivity series. So, reactivity series is nothing but uh, it is a series or arrangement of metals based on their reactivity. So, potassium is the most reactive one then comes sodium calcium, magnesium, aluminium, manganese, zinc, iron, lead, hydrogen, copper, mercury. So, this is Ag. Yes, Ag is nothing but silver and Au, gold and platinum. So, this is nothing but a reactivity series. The metal that is placed above can displace the metal that is placed below it. Okay. For example, so mercury can displace silver, but on the other hand, can di silver displace mercury? No chance. No, it cannot. Okay, so this is the deal behind uh, the displacement reaction. The displacement reaction is also called single displacement reaction. Moving on to double displacement reaction, here exchange of ions is going to happen. What is going to happen here? Exchange of ions. Okay, so here let me give you the general reaction AB plus CD. So AC and BD are formed. These are the products here. Clearly, exchange of ions is happening. So, barium chloride when it reacts with sodium sulphate gives barium sulphate and NaCl. Here, barium sulphate is a precipitate. It is a precipitate, insoluble solid substance. So, there is a misconception about double displacement reaction. It says that so, um, double displacement reactions are always precipitation reactions. True or false? It is actually false because so, only when a precipitate is formed, we consider it as precipitation reactions. Not all double displacement reactions are precipitation reactions, mind you. So, this is a double displacement reaction, but there is no precipitate here. Okay. Yes. Moving on to the next one. So, oxidation and reduction. So, we have studied about oxidation. Oxidation can be regarded as addition of oxygen, addition of oxygen or removal of hydrogen or removal of hydrogen. This is nothing but oxidation. On the other hand, we have reduction, the opposite to that of oxidation. So, here it is addition of hydrogen, it is, it is addition of hydrogen or removal of oxygen or removal of oxygen. So, this is nothing but reduction reaction. This is nothing but reduction reaction. So, if both oxidation as well as reduction reactions are happening simultaneously, 
in a single reaction. We term them as redox reactions. These are examples. Here, vanadium pentoxide is reacting with calcium to form vanadium and calcium oxide. Let me show you here. Vanadium oxide is undergoing reduction process. Why is it undergoing reduction process? Because clearly there is removal of oxygen. So here calcium is, uh, you know, uh, is being added with oxygen. So it is undergoing oxidation reaction. Okay, so both reduction as well as oxidation is happening in the same reaction simultaneously. So we term it as redox reaction. Here also the same thing, copper oxide is undergoing what? Reduction and hydrogen is undergoing, hydrogen is undergoing oxidation reaction. Okay, so this is your homework. Please comment down as to which is undergoing reduction and oxidation. Okay, these are examples for redox reactions. Moving on to the next concept, oxidizing agent and reducing agent. So, oxidizing agent are those substances which oxidize the other, which oxidize the other itself undergoing, itself undergoing reduction, itself undergoing reduction and reducing agents. So, reducing agent are, are, are those substances which are going to reduce the others reduce others but itself undergoes itself undergoes oxidation reactions oxidation reactions these are nothing but reducing agents so if we go back to this uh, previous slide so which is the reducing agent and which is the oxidizing agent which undergoes reduction is the oxidizing agent i'll write oa oxidizing agent so, which itself undergo oxidation reaction, that is the reducing agent. This is the reducing agent. So, calcium is reducing vanadium pentoxide to vanadium. So, vanadium pentoxide is going, is uh, reduce, uh, sorry, oxidizing calcium to calcium oxide. So, you know the difference between reducing agent and oxidizing agent. So, this is, uh, these are the five types of chemical reactions. But, but based on the, uh, you know, temperature change, heat energy, we have two types of reactions. Those are exothermic and endothermic. So, this is the trick that I use, exit, exothermic exit. So, heat is given out. In exothermic reaction, heat is given out. Those, those reactions are called exothermic reactions. So, in reactions in which heat is absorbed by the reactant, heat is heat is absorbed by the reactants are called endothermic reactions. They need heat to carry out the reaction. Okay, so examples are there. So, this is an example for combustion reaction. In combustion reactions, always, so there is release of heat. Okay, really, uh, heat is produced, heat is given out. So, condensation, uh, freezing, photosynthesis, even photosynthesis is a exothermic reaction and respiration, exothermic reaction. Okay, so these are not chemical changes, condensation and freezing, but they have, uh, you know, involvement of heat energy. And then we have endothermic reactions. Here, nitrogen gas and oxygen gas are going to react with each other only when a large amount of heat is supplied, around 700 degrees Celsius. Okay, they are going to give nitrogen monoxide. So, evaporation, endothermic in nature, melting, sublimation, these are all endothermic in nature. These are not chemical reactions, but they, these are, you know, physical changes. Yet, they are endothermic in nature. So, this is all about, you know, different types of uh, chemical equations. See, it's only 14 minutes, okay. So, you can learn under 14 minutes. So, I'm going to release a series of, uh, you know, topics, most important topics for 10th grade. Okay, and for that, so in order to know more about that, please do subscribe to the channel and uh, join the Telegram channel as well. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you all in the next session and all the best. Bye-bye.